sweet music. All the facts. Tell me about capitalism and the patriarchy and love. Yeah. In the time of capitalism, patriarchy. So uh, the intersection of capitalism and the patriarchy follow two similar themes, uh, property and dominance. In Don't Worry Darling, we're presented with a reality in which both are flourishing, but at a cost. The price of economic stability and the illusion of the American dream are paid with the sacrifice of feminine autonomy and masculine emotional autonomy. Both are not allowed in the patriarchal capitalism simulation created by Frank. Uh, it's like, does he have a last name? I don't know. Um, he does. I don't remember yeah. what it is. <laughs> this film, as we've talked about, fails in a lot of ways. But the one thing it does kind of point out is that the social structures of the patriarchy and capitalism work together in this perfect harmony of 40s, 50s, 60s, nostalgic bliss uh, in oppressing women and also like messing with men, too. Like a lot of them don't seem to be having that much fun, even though they pretend to while they're really drunk. They have to work so hard. Yeah. <laughs> Clearly, like, they're not having a good time either. Um, so uh, what we do kind of see is that the only way for true gender equality to be achieved is through the dismantling of all of these systems. To understand this, we need to recognize the harm that both of these social and historical structures do to both groups. And as we talked about, the film really drops the ball on forgetting intersectionality entirely. Um, and how like all of these things are also deeply ingrained in white supremacy and upholding all of those social structures. So it's like, if we're unpacking all of these things, we have to recognize all the intersectionalities that happen within them. Otherwise you will never fully be free of them because if we're going to deconstruct one, you have to deconstruct the other because they do not exist in vacuums. Mm -hmm. um, but, but in an article titled Capitalism and the Oppression of Women, Marx Revisited by Martha E. Jimenez, they overview some ways that capitalism and the patriarchy work together to oppress women. Um, Jimenez argues that while Marx didn't focus explicitly on women's oppression, his theories provide a framework to understand how capitalism contributes to gender inequality. Uh, in their journal, they discourage oversimplifying the issue by just blaming individual men, emphasizing instead the importance of analyzing the historical and economic conditions and shaping social relationships between genders, uh, that in enforcing and uplift, uplifting these flawed systems, both groups are harmed, and that these are both systemic issues uplifted and enforced by individuals, not created individually. Mm -hmm. That's um, like toxic masculinity hurts all of us. Yeah. It's also like racism isn't like just one person being racist. Like you cannot, <laughs> like everyone's a little, it's a whole a little system. Little, it's a whole system acting independently of you. Um, and that's why you have to do something about it. Uh, so similarly, patriarchy and capitalism act independently of each of us. Um, is it when we uphold it and uplift it and enforce it upon others that it's a problem? Um, mm -hmm. So the Marxist feminist thought contends that the intertwined structures of capitalism and patriarchy collaboratively perpetuate the oppression of women within society. Capitalism, driven by profit motives, exploits labor for economic gain, often leading to, for the patriarchal sense, the undervaluation of and marginalization of traditionally feminized work. Um, so anything we see the women doing in this film is de de deemed traditionally feminized work that they don't want the men doing. Um, mm -hmm. The economic system, according to Marxist feminists, exacerbates gender inequalities by reinforcing patriarchal norms that assign women to subordinate roles. The patriarchy as a social system perpetuates gender-based power imbalances, enabling the exploitation and control of women. And within this framework, women are not only regulated to low paying jobs, but also subjected to societal expectations that limit their autonomy and perpetuate gender norms. Uh, Marxist feminist analyze analysis emphasizes the interconnectedness of economic and gender structures, asserting that dismantling both capitalism and patriarchy is essential for achieving gender equality. Um, and don't worry, Darlene, when we look at Alice's career prior to being forced into the simulation as an entire surgeon, uh, we see the conflict Jack feels in that from his perspective, being regulated to the traditionally feminized domestic responsibilities of taking care of the house while Alice acts as the primary breadwinner is a point of his insecurity. It feels yeah, he's like I didn't know how to f feed myself, bro. Like, and, and she's just like, such a bad job of it. He's like, I didn't eat while you were gone because I just don't even know how to exist without you. And it's like, sir, I worked a 30 hour shift. <laughs> You can yeah. make a meal, friend, even in the simulation. It's like a whole thing. I don't have my phone in surgery. Like, are you kidding? It's really just like wild, like how entitled to her time he feels and like 
even before, like even in the simulation, he's just not doing a great job authentically supporting her. And it really kind of reveals the twist for me. Like it felt honestly, like once I saw it, I was like, oh, that was predictable as hell. Uh, <laughs> so <laughs> he's uh, not. Yeah, he was never an ally. No. So in essence, this fuels his insecurity and is likely the root of why he feels so emboldened by the Inselli podcast and the promises that Frank positions for this world, um, where he will no longer be harmed by society's view of him as a failure under patriarchal capitalism and instead can bury those feelings because you can't have feelings under the patriarchy uh, under all of that power. <laughs> His motivation is not out of love or even care towards Alice, but out of the desire to be approved of by society, other men, and desired by Alice as a desperate attempt of gaining her adoration, body, and approval that is promised to him by the patriarchy and he feels he is not receiving. Um, he wants this dissected version of Alice who won't call him out when he's doing something wrong, and this is largely because of the social pressures of Western patriarchal society deeming him unworthy if he cannot maintain that place of power so to quote bell hooks love trilogy uh psychological patriarchy is the dance of contempt a perverse form of connection that replaces true intimacy with complex covert layers of dominance and submission collusion and manipulation it is the unacknowledged paradigm of relationships that has suffused western civilization generation after generation disarming both sex sexes and destroying the passionate bond between them uh it's so you don't tell the truth <laughs> mm -hmm. uh you don't you can't it, it diminishes any power to have any emotional capacity uh within there so as i get into it love and domination do not mix uh which is should be obvious but unfortunately because of how society and uh, people are socialized isn't because we're socialized to believe that even if someone hurts you, they still love you. They have mm -hmm. what their intentions matter more than their impact. And that's just not yeah. true. That that's a way that they love you. Mm -hmm. So control. yeah. So, and don't worry, darling, like the government, <laughs> the government loves you so much. Look at it. Take care of you by punching down, um, taking all your money. Yep. So in Don't Worry Darling, Jack tosses his emotional connection with Alice aside for the promise of power, willing to sacrifice her autonomy and his as well, uh, as well as his ability to em empathetically connect love or care for Alice in the process. The big reveal that Jack is a part of the whole thing is predictable when you understand his investment in the system, despite his nice guy routine, he performs well in that he performs love, just like he performs that weird dance in the promotional ceremony. He Which didn't make any sense. Did Why it? did he Other do than that? like you're showing it's a performance. I don't know. <laughs> it was very dance. It was a choice. Yeah. He performs verbal support and care without actually ever delivering upon actions of that. And instead, actually perpetuating harm towards Alice, despite saying how much he loves and cares about her. So her, his love is as much of a performance in the simulation as the simulation itself. Um, because he does not know how to act genuine in an ingenuine world. Uh to quote Bell Hooks again, when men and women punish each other for truth telling, we reinforce the notion that lies are better. To be love, to be loving, we willingly hear the other's truth. And most important, we affirm and value the truth telling. Lies may make people feel better, but they do not help us know love. Um, so in this, the lies of everything's great, everything's wonderful, you're happy is in this harmful. world is more harmful <laughs> than actually be, you're never going to connect meaningfully with someone if you're not being your most authentic self. So the scene that stands out to me is the performance of him cooking dinner where he just does a horrible job <laughs> of making a meal like in the simulation. Like he's trying so hard uh, to just like make her dinner. And as the puppy he is, is just so desperate for that, like bad performance to be enough um he just really wants her approval and in this article psychological patriarchy and covert submission and don't worry darling on flip screen by tilly long they unpack this nicely stating once we kind of see the real jack this em emasculated unemployed incel the real jack seems to be tucked away in a basement listening to frank's pseudo intellectual philosophy of gender base based on psychological professor and culture world, Jordan Peterson, which Gabe talked about. Meanwhile, Alice is a surgeon, 
a whole surgeon working 30 hours a day and consists consequently dismissing her boyfriend's sexual advances a bit too often for his liking in the self-imposed matrix program jack can position himself as a provider and breadwinner addressing a personal crisis of masculinity perhaps in order to feel worthy of alice whilst degrading himself with the status while degrading her to the status of a sex object and personal maid this inevitable doesn't serve him though as jack seems almost as helpless as his wife when confessing he hates the control exerted on him by frank's system in particular the day job he works in the real world to pay for the simulation he doesn't enjoy um mm -hmm. and again as bell hooks has written to indoctrinate boys to the rules of the patriarchy we force them to feel pain and deny their feelings patriarchy so blatantly doesn't bode well for anyone here not even the husbands who appear content to the untrained eye uh, it is now clear that most of the housewives Alice has befriended are also purposefully trapped in this town by men in their lives, although certainly don't know yet for most of them. So the last piece of this is how love and control like don't intermingle <laughs> like you can mm -hmm. um, is that something that Alice says like towards the end is that Jack like can't love her like you don't love me because you put me in here. You stole. Yeah, you don't love me. Who I was when I wasn't here. Like my my personality. You like pieces of me, sure, as a toy for you. you Absolutely, love this idea of me. Yeah. Um. You've manic pixie dream girled me into this uh, <laughs> time. Uh. But the character of Jack cannot love Alice because, again, you can't violate someone and say that you love them. If we are being abused in any way, then we are not being loved. Love is the opposite of abuse and domination. So everyone should just read Bell Hooks. I'm just letting you know. Um, I am making it my mission for 2024. Uh, so if love cannot exist under domination or abuse, it cannot exist under capitalism or the patriarchy because love acts in the opposite of those things. And if to be married and be in love under capitalism is mostly a financial exchange, same. <laughs> mm -hmm. It's just a bad time. You can't have both. Like, it's really gross. Yeah. Yeah. That's my face for that. <laughs> yeah, I think this, um, I think that w was well said. Can't by you and bell hooks, yeah. um, <laughs> and and yeah, precisely that. I think that I don't think Olivia Wilde was trying to tell us that Jack loved her or that that any of that was like I you know Jack is very much a villain. I think we just didn't give enough credit to the fact that everyone else was a villain too. Um, yeah, and so they were like kind of disguised as victims as well. And I think when when it comes to capitalism um, and the patriarchy and some of those ideals, it's easy to say, like, we're all victims of it. Um, but when you uphold those systems and you do the work to keep them in place and you're not, you know, acknowledging the harm of them, then you are also like a contributor of that harm. Like yeah. You become a villain as well. Yeah, just because um, individuals aren't the creators, they are the perpetuators. So yeah, we allow the system to to stay right. Yeah. And so if you're not doing anything to rid this, like get rid of the system, <laughs> then you're part of the system. Yeah. And then your problem. And so yeah, and I think really all of it, like that was the thing that I was struggling with is you know how much of this is is Olivia Wilde's place to say. Right. Mm -hmm. Like she can only speak her truth and from her lens, which is why it is what it is. Right. And yeah. I think decent enough job for what she did. Well, she's got a lot of mess she's got to go through in her personal life and on screen, it seems. So I, you know, uh, yeah. <laughs> um, but she was trying to say something. Yeah. And I, maybe we should let other people say stuff too. That's where that's where I'm at with it as well. Uh, we've had yeah. this story before. Like it wasn't saying anything like revolutionary or that new, even though it's positioned as like that being what it was doing, where mm -hmm. we could have had a different movie made by a different person and gotten a totally different lens that I think we both feel is desperately needed um, mm -hmm. and has been done by some people, yeah. but not well, enough. <laughs> Because there was that, um, the Independence Day, July 4th, 
Culture Shock. Remember mm. that? Culture Shock. Uh which was on Hulu mm. as part of one of their like the different it came out for like the fourth of July or whatever. Yeah. Um but that was like it was that she was a, a Mexican woman who was uh living in a very similar idyllic world. Oh yeah, um, yeah, yeah. I do remember that now that you're talking about. It. Yeah. It did something very similar. Thing, <laughs> yeah, and because the whole thing um well, yeah, and it's by Gigi Saul Guerrero. I knew it. I've yeah. talked to her before. Um, they, yeah, she, like, that was this film. <laughs> like, not to spoil this film. It wasn't a great film, I will say that. It was fine. Um, but that was the end of what Culture Shock was, but even worse. Yeah. Because it was, con- like, it was done better because it was con- such direct commentary and it was told in a very unique way. But it was this twist. Yeah. There was a simulation and that was a, place of control and power is literally this film so we've yeah. seen this film from a different lens and it could we could have given her the money give yeah. Gigi all the money and then you know let Olivia Wilde sort out her stuff at home her issues with Miss Flo um <laughs> So uh, I hope that you enjoyed um, that. Uh, Kat, did you have any last things you wanted to say? No, I think we said them all. Close that. We got that. We said a lot of words. This so. is our back into it time. So yeah. I think we did a good job so, for getting back yeah. into it. I hope you enjoy us getting back to our roots of uh, citing sources. Yeah, I read <laughs> doing <laughs> writing a script. I read JSTOR articles. And... <laughs> Yeah, philosophical um, theories and stuff like it was intense. Taking advantage of like access to academic materials. Yeah. So let us know how you feel about Don't Worry Darling. Did you like the twist? Have you read the lamp story on Reddit? Do you have any other cool stories you want to share with us? I love a good Reddit. Like if you know you watch those videos of the people and they're playing like the run game. Yeah. And the I person love those. just it's like the computer just reads like a Reddit story yeah. and I'm, I'm here for it dude <laughs> reddit has so much creative stuff on it. it i feel like there should yeah. be movies made from some of these concepts <laughs> yeah absolutely um yeah so let us know and, and and i hope you enjoy the rest of our new year new me series uh it's new us but it's the same us yeah um just maybe something else is happening yeah new year old us new year new us <laughs> but old topics vibes energies i don't know <laughs> whatever you like i don't it. know we're 30 so uh <laughs> don't get married they'll eat your kids or or they'll put you in a simulation yeah you know simulate against kids. your will like literally just ask me if yeah. you're like would you rather like not live here i and love video live games in second life yeah yeah in second life i'm waiting Please, start this to. trash body absolutely sign me up for simulated reality oh my god i don't have to diet i just live yeah <laughs> i can pick an avatar that'd be so fun dude like Put me in if a pod. you make this place like give me powers and stuff like you can yeah, do anything make it a video yeah. game but you don't die i would love that that'd be so fun you can do anything why is this what you choose I oh would, it's such I a be... like a linear limited thought process yeah. they should make it where it's like you get stuck a sword art online you know you get stuck in like an rpg an MMORPG. So be yeah, there. Yeah, I'm gonna level up. Yeah. But I, like, yeah, it's such a man, like a incel white man idea to be like, I have technology that can transport your consciousness into a new world, and this is what I make. Yeah. <laughs> this is Trump's America. Anyway, um, <laughs> bye. Bye. <laughs>